Hello there. In this video, we're going to look at some additional properties associated with the gamma function. So recall the gamma function, gamma of x, is defined to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the minus t dt. And this is typically defined for any x greater than 0. So in this video, we're going to be primarily focusing on the logarithmic derivative of gamma, which some people refer to as the digamma function. So, to begin, let us first define what the digamma function is. So the digamma function, which is typically represented by Greek letter psi, so psi of x is defined to be equal to the derivative of the natural logarithm of the gamma function, which some people refer to as the logarithmic derivative of gamma. So by the chain rule, we know this is going to be equal to what? So the derivative of the outside function, which is natural log of x, is going to be 1 divided by the interior function, times the derivative of the inside function, which is gamma prime of x. So we can say that di gamma of x, or psi of x, is equal to gamma prime of x divided by gamma x. So this is the definition of di gamma function. So let's talk about a couple properties associated to this function. So firstly recall that gamma of x plus 1 is going to be equal to gamma times gamma of x. So that's one of the recursive properties of the gamma function. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of this expression with respect to x. So the derivative with respect to x of gamma x plus 1 is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of x times gamma of x. So the derivative of gamma of x plus 1 is of course going to be equal to gamma prime of x plus 1 times the derivative of x, which is just 1. And this is going to be equal to, so we can use a product rule on the right hand side. So this is going to be first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So we can rewrite this more nicely as gamma prime of x plus 1 is going to be equal to x gamma prime of x plus gamma of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of this expression by gamma of x plus 1. And I'm going to use the property that psi of x is equal to gamma prime of x over gamma x. And I'm going to use the fact that gamma of x plus 1 is equal to x gamma of x. So if that is true, so let's first look at this property. So gamma of x plus 1, I'm going to be focusing on this one primarily first. So this is going to be equal to gamma prime of x plus 1 all over gamma of x plus 1. So what is this? Well, this is precisely equal to psi of x plus 1. So continuing on, we have x times gamma prime of x all over x times gamma of x. So we see that these x's will cancel. And what is left is gamma prime over gamma, which of course is the definition of psi of x. And then over here, what do we have? So we have plus gamma of x plus x gamma x, because gamma of x plus 1 is precisely that. So we see that these gamma x cancel, so we're just left with 1 over x. So we gain the property that psi of x plus 1 is going to be equal to psi of x plus 1 over x. So this is one of the common properties of the digamma function. So let's use this property to develop uh, some interesting results. So firstly, let x be equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, we get psi of 2 is equal to psi of 1 plus 1. So when x is equal to 2, we get psi of 3 is equal to psi of 2 plus 1 half. Um, but what exactly is psi of 2? Well, psi of 2 is psi of 1 plus 1. So we can say psi of 2 is equal to psi of 1 plus 1 
plus one half. So we can say psi of two is equal to psi of one plus one plus one over two. So let's just keep that in mind. Let's look at x is equal to three. So when x is equal to three, psi of three, or psi of four rather, is gonna be equal to psi of three plus one over three. Now, what is psi of three equal to? So psi of three, which is this expression, right? So psi of three is psi of one plus one plus one half. So let's just replace that. So we get that psi of four is equal to psi of one plus one plus one half plus one third. And you may see what is going to start to build uh, on this right hand side. So we can say that psi of four is going to be equal to psi of one plus the sum of the first three reciprocal fractions, which we sometimes refer to as the third harmonic number. So similarly, we can find that psi of five is gonna be equal to psi of one plus the fourth harmonic number. And in general, you can generalize this to be uh, psi of n is equal to psi of one plus the n minus one harmonic number. So this is another uh, interesting result for the digamma function. So let's see if we can try and figure out what this relationship is for psi of one. So what is psi of one? So psi of one is gonna be the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the gamma function evaluated at the point x is equal to one. Or equivalently, this is going to be gamma prime of x divided by gamma of x evaluated at x is equal to one. So we can rewrite this as one over gamma of x times the derivative with respect to x of the gamma function, which is the integral from zero to infinity of t to the x minus one times e to the minus t dt. And we're going to be evaluating this at x is equal to one. So we can apply Leibniz rule for this and pass the total derivative underneath and turn it into a partial derivative with respect to x. So this is gonna be one divided by gamma of x times the integral from zero to infinity times the partial derivative with respect to x of t to the x minus one times e to the minus t dt. And we still need to evaluate this at x is equal to one. So with respect to x, so e to the minus t is a constant and this is gonna be an exponential function. So what is that going to be? So this is gonna be one over gamma of x times the integral from zero to infinity. Um, so we can look at this. So what is the derivative of a to the t minus one or a to the x minus one? So that's gonna be t to the x minus one times the natural log of the base of that exponential function times this constant e to the minus t dt evaluated at x is equal to one. And what do we have here? So when x is equal to one, we can plug in into this term since that's the only term that has x in it. So one minus one is gonna be zero and t to the zero power is going to be one and zero is a boundary point and one can see that that will converge uh, with no problem at all. So therefore, uh, psi of one, is going to be equal to one over gamma of one times the integral from zero to infinity of t to the one minus one times the natural log of t e to the minus t dt. Now what is gamma of one? So remember gamma of one is going to be equal to uh, one minus one factorial which is going to be one by definition. So and this is going to be equal to one as well. So therefore, psi of one will be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of t times e to the minus t dt. Now this integral should look very familiar to you. Remember this is equal to the negative euler mascheroni constant. So this, so since 
the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of t, e to the minus t dt, is equal to minus gamma, which we've proved in previous videos so far, in case you uh, haven't seen them. So therefore, we can say that psi of 1 is equal to minus gamma. So with that being said, how can we rewrite our previous identity? So remember, psi of n plus 1 was equal to psi of 1 plus the nth harmonic number. So now we can replace psi of 1 with minus gamma. So therefore, we get the beautiful identity that psi of n plus 1 is equal to minus gamma plus the nth harmonic number. So this is a beautiful relationship that relates the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function, the Euler-Mascarini constant, and the harmonic numbers.